hello and welcome to this week's music show. Coming up, all hail Queen Bee. Beyonce's back and she's getting mad as her new album Lemonade sees the singer call out the cheaters of the world. The Democratic Republic of Congo has lost one of its most iconic artists after Papa Wemba died on stage. The world music star was 66. And another loss for the industry as Billy Paul took a final bow. The soul singer passed away after a career spanning over six decades. Well, for all that, I'm joined by our music critic, Mark Thompson. Hello, Mark. Hi, Olivia. Now, I'll be soliciting your opinion in just a second, but we're starting with one of the most eagerly anticipated albums of the year. Beyonce unleashed a tidal wave of speculation after she released what's been called a visual album. It's called Lemonade. Let's take a look at one of the singles. This is Freedom. Well, Mark, we thought excitement had reached fever pitch in January when Beyoncé released Formation, that other single, but this, uh, the excitement around this record may have surpassed that. Was Formation a good preview of what Lemonade is about, mood-wise? Um, well, Formation was more of a meditation on what it's like to be a modern black American. Um, there are elements of that that permeates this album, but it's more... Uh, there's, there's really another theme going on here, and let's be kind to Jay-Z and say it is to do with a marriage that's breaking down uh, and a potentially a cheating husband. Uh, I'm not saying it's Jay-Z, other people might say it's Jay-Z, uh, but let's see what the lyrics say. Um, we have our interpretations of, you can taste the dishonesty, it's all over your breath. Uh, Tonight, I regret the nights I put that ring on, and you better call Becky with the good hair. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether Damning you Damning evidence, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Depends on your uh, analysis of the lyrics and the imagery that comes along with it. This was a huge visual album, as you say. It was over an hour long that debuted on American TV before being released on Tidal, of course, Jay-Z's streaming service, which is also quite fitting or ironic. It depends which side you fit on. Although the story does come back around and the couple involved do resolve their problems. Although, again... I will give you some time to prove I can trust you again. This is your final warning. You know I gave you life. If you try this again, you're going to lose your wife. So, still very angry. Uh, let's have a look at Beyonce at her angry best. This is Hold Up. Missing say Hold up They don't love you like I love you Slow down They don't love you like I love you Back up They don't love you like I love you Step down They don't love you like I love you Can't you see there's no other man above you What a wicked way to treat the girl that loves you Hold up They don't love you like I love you Slow down They don't love you like I love you it's such a shame you let this good love Well, Mark, you're not the only one who's been impressed by this record. Critically, I've seen some pretty pro positive reactions to it. What about the fans? Any idea how they've received it? I think everyone's still trying to soak it up. It's just so much... Uh Lyrically, imagery, it's, it, it's incredible. Uh, obviously, Twitter has responded in its usual way. Here are some of my favourite res responses. Uh, they've basically been jury and executioner for Jay-Z. They have decided it, it is about him. Uh, Jay-Z finally has 100 problems, a nice reference to his hit, 99 problems there. Uh, this is our generation's Watergate. I feel that may be a little is bit... Is it? Is it really? <laughs> I feel like that may be a bit of an exaggeration. And Beyonce just won custody of the internet in the divorce. Uh, again, I don't think they're getting divorced anytime soon, but Beyonce is certainly winning any time now. Yeah, that it's is true a that fight. The, the buzz surrounding this, uh, what people have said, is the music event of the year is obviously huge. And perhaps even the celebrity gossip of the year. What about the content, though? Beyond all of the, the dissing and the relationships, there's some interesting collaborations going on here. It's incredible. If you go through each of the tracks, you can even pause every frame and there are celebrities and A-listers in 
the background, and all of the collaborations seem inspired. You have The Weeknd in there, you have Kendrick Lamar in there, you have uh, James Blake appears on a few songs, you have The Yeah Yeah Yeahs, you have Vampire Weekend, all these hugely respected artists from across loads of different genres. It's a very grown up record. Okay, so I think we can say Beyonce is going from strength to strength. Well, next, the music industry has suffered some heavy losses. We just got to grips with the news of Prince's death. Now, Congolese singer Papa Wemba has bowed out too. He collapsed on stage in Ivory Coast while appearing at a music festival. The singer was hugely influential in bringing Congolese music to the rest of the world. Andrew Hillier takes a look back at his career. He was known as the king of Congolese rumba. Born in 1949 in what was then called the Belgian Congo, Papa Wemba helped set up Zyko Langa Langa, a group that would become wildly popular in the 1970s. He brought the traditional rumba back into the cultural mainstream by adding rock and electric sounds. He quickly became a household name across Africa. In the 1990s, hits like Maria Valencia or Yolele would make him a key figure on the world music scene. One of the highlights of his career came in the early 90s when he was signed up to Peter Gabriel's label. The two would end up going on tour together. We went everywhere. We shared the same stage. He allowed me to discover an audience that I had never known before, a rock audience. An icon of African music, he influenced countless young musicians. Congolese singer MJ30 often shared the stage with him. He's an icon, a monument, my idol. Every time he was on stage, he would bring something that no one else could. In 2004, he found himself on the wrong side of the law for trying to smuggle migrants into France by passing them off as members of his own band. But Papa Wemba will mostly be remembered for his flamboyant personality and as one of Africa's greatest ever musicians. Well, as, being, as well as being a very snappy dresser, I think we can uh, thank Papa Wemba for bringing us Congolese rumba. Tell us more about his style, Mark. The style is definitely a word people associate with Papa Wemba. Uh, he blended African, Cuban and Western uh, themes and to create this new sound called Suku. Um, and you can, people have put him in the same context as Fela Kuti, as uh, a, an African musician who's really pushed... Uh, the, uh, the continent's music forward and had such a monumental impact on the sound. Uh, many in the West uh, know him for him, his collaborations with Peter Gabriel in the early 90s uh, and the pair really helped to uh, spread uh, world music uh, around uh, at the time. He's obviously known for his style, as you were saying as well, his clothing in particular. Uh, he was a driving force behind the Sapeur movement and uh, I think that will be one of his le uh, legacies as well. Okay, and that wasn't the only loss for the industry. Of course, soul singer Billy Paul passed away at 80 years old. Now, he was one of the leading lights in the Philadelphia soul scene of the 1970s. Going on the tributes I've seen to Billy Paul, you get the impression that he was a bit of a musician's musician. Mark, why do you think that it was? Yeah, I think maybe people have uh, focused too much on Me and Mrs. Jones, which is another song about uh, an affair, this time uh, a man having... Uh, an affair with a married woman. Although I wonder how many couples have not really listened to the lyrics and had that a dance at their wedding to this song. Um, but his career was much more than that and lasted over 60 years. And he was really a big voice in the socially conscious 1960s civil rights movement. And this sound that was coming from Philadelphia at the time, uh, alongside Gamble and Huff, who he wrote a number of songs with. Uh, and there's the same stable of musicians that came up with Love Train and If You Don't Know Me By Now. But uh, yeah, this me and Mrs. Jones, this is the song that really stuck with him and that people will remember him for. Let's remind ourselves how that sounds.
we're finishing off with yet more tributes to an artist who's no longer with us. Fans of Prince have been gathering outside his Paisley Park recording studios in Minnesota after the singer died last week. Now, there's also been some very high-profile tributes to Prince as well, not just fans, but people from the music industry. Who has been paying their respects? Yes, very fittingly. Uh, both Coachella and New Orleans Jazz Festival in particular have been paying uh, their respects. Janelle Monet really stole the show in New Orleans. She's, uh, she worked very closely with Prince on her record in 2013, and she uh, gave a lot of details about that time. Uh, Coachella, meanwhile, played... Uh, Prince's 2008 cover of Radiohead's Creep uh, at the festival and uh, my favourite is uh, Bruce Springsteen's 10 minute rendition of Purple Rain to open his concert in Brooklyn that's very fitting because he knocked Purple Rain off uh, the top of the US charts in 1984 so it's nice that he uh, paid his respects as well very respectful tribute from uh, Bruce Springsteen another master guitarist like Prince Definitely. as well well, we'll leave you with some of those bittersweet memorials, all painted in purple, of course. Remember, you can get more culture news on our website. We're also on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Revisited. Because they were young, because they were women, they were kidnapped, tortured and raped. Since the 90s, hundreds of women have been found dead in Ciudad Juarez, their bodies horribly mutilated. A prostitution ring, a serial killer and countless other theories have been suggested. Despite all the investigations, the mystery of the dead women has never been solved. Franz Van Kat follows the struggle by the mothers of the victims, who want to obtain justice for their murdered daughters. Revisited on France 24 and on France24.com.